and welcome to episode 84 of the Giddy Knits podcast. As always, I'm Helen and I'm coming to you from Dundee in Scotland, where I live with my husband Tom and my two boys, Arthur, who is seven, and Jasper, who is four. Today is Sunday, the 24th of January. Just double checking on my show notes down there. <laughs> Um, and as always, this is my crafting slash knitting podcast. Um, and as I always say at the beginning, for anyone that doesn't know, I am the dyer behind Giddy Yarns. And yeah, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back, as always, to anyone that watches regularly. Thank you so much for coming and watching. And hello to anyone that's checking it out for the first time as well. Um, right. Is that everything intro wise? Um, show notes, I always forget to say until kind of midway through the episode, but show notes can be found in the drop down box on YouTube below the video. Um, and I usually try and link to everything that I talk about down there. You can also find details of where to find me elsewhere on the internet down there. And I also, you will have seen, I assume, <laughs> um, I also have a little screen that I pop up at the beginning of the podcast um, so that you can kind of see where to find me as well. Right, what have I got for you this week? This week is another shorter episode. Um, I am going to chat a little bit of announcements, just chat about some of our make-alongs quickly. Um, I've got a couple of works in progress to share with you. Um, a little bit of a new cast on, part of one that I can't actually really show you yet, but I'll explain that later. And also one that is imminent. And then I'm going to finish up with a little bit of bl blanket progress. I've got no yarny goodness this week. I'm not going to bother with a shop news section because there's nothing new in the shop since the last episode. So that's it. Right, announcements. Let's start with my announcement. I call it announcements, but it's a bit more of an admin-y section, isn't it? Um, let's start with the admin section, shall we? We've got two make-alongs running at the moment. There is the Giddy Yarns make-along, which, as I mention every week, is an ongoing make-along. And as long as you use 50% of... As long as your project uses 50% of my yarn, then it counts. Um, all the details, all the full details and everything, again, can be found below the video and they can also be found in the Ravelry groups. Um, details of how to enter can be found down below and the hashtags if you're entering on Instagram and all of that kind of stuff. And then the second make along that we've got running at the moment is our wrapping up those whips make along. So any project that you started in 2020 or earlier and I want to clarify that I realize I said last week that it had to have been started in 2020 if you started it in 2019 or 2018 or 1976 <laughs> um, that would have been hard for me because I wasn't born in 1976 um anyway <laughs> then um they count as long as it was cast on before this year um I have changed the wording of the groups uh, the wording of the rules in the Ravelry groups um, and I'll make sure that I change it below the video as well. So yeah, as long as it wasn't cast on this year, then it's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, so that is running up until the end of February. So you need to get any finished objects in the thread by the end of February. Um, and I don't think there's very complicated rules for that. Finished objects. I'm going to be drawing a prize from the finished object thread I'm going to draw a prize from the chatter thread and on Ravelry and I'm also going to draw a prize from the hashtag on Instagram. I think that's just going to keep it easiest. So there'll be three prizes. I haven't dug out the prizes yet. I haven't worked out what they're going to be, but I do have a little box full of prizes. Um, so I will work that out before the end of February. They will be yarny prizes and they will probably be giddy yarns related yarny prizes as well. Um, yeah. Um, details for entering, as I said, is down below, um, but both of the make-alongs can be entered on Ravelry. Um, there are finished object threads and chatter threads over there, and we have also got hashtags. So for the wrapping up those whips, cow, the hashtag, I will make sure I pop it on the screen, but it is um, wrapping up those whips, M-A-L, so short for make-along. Um, and yeah, any any finished objects that get added to that will get added. Actually, do you know what? Any posts that use that hashtag on Instagram, I'm just going to draw from that hashtag for the prizes. We'll keep this one really, really simple. Right, I should move on to some works in progress, shouldn't I? Some actual knitting content. 
right so put me a cup of tea down and work out what I'm going to share with you um so I have I feel like I've not made masses of progress on anything this week it's been a full-on homeschooling chaotic working week um but I've mostly been working on my Vertices Unite and I'm kind of thinking of this as my make-along um, project because it's a long-term whip that really needs finishing. But I have added some progress to it. So when I shared this last time, um, I think I didn't have it on the needles. I just finished, which section had I just finished? I just finished this blue section here. I've now picked up and started working on the penultimate section I guess um this one here which is striping between the bramble colorway and the um the witcher inspired Geralt of Rivia colorway from down sheepy lane um all of the details of the yarns that I'm using um will be in the show notes and I talked about them in detail on the last episode so I'm not going to go I'm not going to go into detail and share every colorway every week because you'll be bored of me saying the same things um, but the pattern, if you are new and you don't know, is the Vertices Unite pattern by Stephen West. Um, it's a really fun kind of garter stitch shawl, but with a really interesting construction. Hopefully you can see it there to some extent. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm in the, pen the penultimate section. So I've got this section to finish, um, which gets up to this point, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm getting there. And then there's one more section on the end which will be knit in this colourway. And then I have to do, there's an I-cord border all around the outside. Um, so that will be the final stage. But this is getting some progress. I mean, it doesn't look like much, does it? But for me, in a week of homeschooling chaos, this is some decent progress, especially considering I had a little bit of an issue. <laughs> I must have knit about, I don't know, about this much of the section and then I managed to drop the, the stitch at this edge and I couldn't work out what had happened until I sort of cast it back on again but yeah I dropped the stitch at this edge which is where you pick up um so as you work up this edge you pick up I mean you actually you can see it there because I've I've done it here um you pick up the um what does what's this bit called the salvage edge you pick up the salvage edge of this section and then on the next row you join them together. Um, I managed to drop this stitch and um, the whole thing just came apart. It just came completely off the edge of separated from this section. Um, so although I'd got my original pickup stitches along this bit, um, this section, just this bit in here, just weren't joined at all. Um, so that was a little bit frustrating because I had to rip it all out and start again. Um, so actually, I kind of knit that bit twice. Um, so if I hadn't had to do that, maybe I would have finished this section. I don't know. Anyway, I'm rambling about this now. Um, but yeah, my Vertices Unite is coming along. I'm hoping, my goal is to get this finished by the end of February. Project bag nearly ended up on the floor. Um, my goal is to get this finished by the end of February and use our make-along as my motivation to get this finished. Fingers crossed. Um, I've also put a little bit of work into my, my, my Christmas autumn adventure socks. Um, let me pop this one away and I can show you. Where's that hiding? Here it is. So again, these will be familiar to familiar to you because they're ones I've been talking about for the last few weeks um oh you hate it when you take them out of the bag and they're all tangled up um oh I've not made that any better at all right anyway we'll deal with the tangle um so yeah these are the autumn adventure socks which is a pattern by um Jesse Marie makes and I'm using yarn from Debbie at Down Sheepy Lane um, so this is the front of the sock. As you can see, it's just kind of a ribbed, a, a ribbed style, broken rib style. I don't quite know what to call it, but it's a gorgeous kind of rib pattern. Um, really, really effective. And both of the socks are now ready for a heel. Um, so this is the first one. And then the second one is there as well. 
and they are both ready for a heel. Um, and the curl of the yarn came with um, this lovely kind of turquoisey, tea turquoise colour to go for the heel. Um, so I'm going to use, I'm dropping everything today. I've just knocked my show notes off. I've dropped the yarn on the floor. Right, I'm not doing a good job, am I? <sighs> breathe, Helen, breathe. Right, um, this is going to be used for heels and toes. Um, so that will be my job at some point this week, will be to get the heels into both of these socks and then I will just be working down the foot. Um, and I think the foot, how many did I do on here? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. I tend to do 65 rows for a foot. Um, so it's just basically like knitting the leg again, I guess. Um, and then I will add the toe in, in the contrast colour as well. Is there anything else to say about these? I don't know. You've seen them quite a bit, haven't you? You're probably getting sick of them. Um, but yeah, they're coming along. And I, part of me is ready to cast on another pair of socks. And I'll talk about that later because actually I've caked up some yarn ready to cast on another pair of socks. But part of me is also thinking maybe I should literally work on these until these are finished before casting on another pair of socks. But mm, I don't know. I'm tempted to cast on another pair of socks as well. Oh, it's decisions, isn't it? The decisions of a knitter. Do you cast on more socks or do you work on what you've got? I was literally talking to one of my friends about this this morning because we were talking about how many whips we had and she was saying about how it's so frustrating, isn't it, when you just can't find enough time to work on all your projects. And my response was, well, if I cast on less things, then that wouldn't be an issue because <laughs> I would have the right number of things to knit on and I wouldn't have not enough time. Um, but yeah, there's just something exciting about casting on new things, isn't there? Right, did I have another work in progress? Oh, I kind of did. Um, I also dug out, I have this project bag, which is a little grey girl project bag. Um, and in here are a load of sock tubes. Um, I have a 3D printed circular sock machine. Um, for anyone that is relatively new to the channel, if you've come to the channel through Vlogmas, I probably haven't shared much of it. Um, but... Back in my August vlogs, I shared quite a few bits. Um, I will, what will I do? I will link down below in the show notes, I'll link where I got the circular sock machine from. It's from um, a Scottish company called Ashcroft Makers. And I will also link the, um, vlo the August vlog videos that I shared the sock machine on. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I have a 3D printed circular sock machine. And I've got a few tubes that I've cranked up on it and that are just sitting, having nothing done to. So I finally, this week, picked, dug them out and um, picked up for the cuff on one sock. Um, so this sock tube is um, a really, really ancient Giddy Yarns colourway. This was called Wicked Witch. It was a Halloween colourway I launched in like my first year of business. I opened Giddy Yarns in 2017. Um, so yeah, it's quite an old colourway, but it's been sitting in my stash for ages and I just thought it would be a perfect one for trying out the sock machine. Um, it's just a fun black and green sort of tonal. I love the way it micro striped. Um, it cranked up really nicely, actually. Um, so yeah, I've just picked up to do the cuffs. And what I do is I crank the sock tube, obviously, and then I will pick up the stitches um, for the cuff. And then what I will do is I will pick them up like far enough down the sock tube that there's enough yarn left to knit the cuff with. So I've got this little nugget of um, yarn and that will be enough to do kind of 15 rows um, for the cuff in the same colour. Then what I will do is I will come down and I will cut in for the heel just in the way that you do for a normal afterthought heel. Um, I have started using the umbrella heel from um, the umbrella socks pattern, which is a pattern by Kay Jones. Um, and it's it's really good. So it's basically, she's done a lot of patterns with the umbrella toe. And it's basically the umbrella toe used as a heel, um, but as an afterthought heel. And it fits a lot better. I find that a normal afterthought heel doesn't fit me very well. Whereas the afterthought 
umbrella heel works quite well. Um, so I've done, that's what I'll do. So I'll cut down and put the umbrella heel in. Then I know these are gonna be for my dad. <laughs> so I've got two little stitch markers here that are just marking how long the foot needs to be for my dad's feet. Um, so I will then know where to put the toe in. And then I'll basically do the same. I'll then pick up the stitches to do the cuff and yeah, that's it. Um, so it's just afterthought cuffs, heels and afterthought toes, basically. Um, the first time I did it, it was very, very daunting, but I've kind of got used to it now and it's it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, that's one sock tube. I've got another couple of sock tubes. I'll share the tubes because why not? You've not seen them in ages. Um, I caked up some of my um, Yuletide colourway. Ignore this slightly darker section. That isn't an, that isn't an error in the stripe in the dyeing, that is an error in um, me using the sock machine. Um, that's where it slipped some stitches. So there's actually stitches behind, which is what's giving that slightly darker, that slightly darker stripe. Um, but yeah, so I've got Yuletide, that needs to be turned into a pair of socks. I've also got um, Frosted, which again, that needs to be turned into a pair of socks. Um, and again, I look at, it's really obvious on the camera that there's a darker bit there. Again, that's just where I've slipped stitches and it's just got a little bit of funny fabric. Um, <laughs> it's me getting used to the sock machine. And then finally, I've got a skein of my Goosebumps colourway, which I, what's my jigged, cranked up as well. So I really just need to get some of these into socks. Um, yeah, I really need to get some of these into socks. But anyway, I thought I'd check because I've, not talked about the sock machine so i dropped some stitch markers i've not talked about the sock machine a lot at all recently um i had a little bit of an issue with it a little part of it broke um and i've been so just chaotic that i've not got round to um talking to the makers to get it repaired um but i reached out to them this weekend and they got back to me so 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 quickly and they're sending out replacement parts to fix it which is amazing their customer service is absolutely fantastic um, so I wish I'd contacted them sooner, but that's all on me. Um, so I'm really excited, actually, to be able to get some more bits and pieces cranked up. Um, yeah, looking forward to getting it sorted and getting it getting it on the go again. Not that I've got anywhere to put it now that I've moved the office around. Right. So hopefully by the end of February, these will be a pair of socks as well. Um... What else was I going to talk about? That's all the works in progress I was going to talk about. Oh yeah, new cast-ons. So, I have cast on something new, but I can't share it with you. Um, I have cast on a blanket, <laughs> because I need more blankets on the needles, don't I? <laughs> if you've been following the podcast for a while, you know that I have a little bit of an issue with casting on blankets. Um, I must have about four maybe five blanket whips on the go, something like that. I've got my Advent blanket, my Mild Mayhem blanket, I've got my Cozy Memories blanket, um, I've got... Have I got more than that? Oh, I've got my Hexagon blanket, that's four. Now I've just cast on a new blanket, and when um, I get the club from Henny Penny Makes that I was talking about a couple of weeks ago, um, I'm going to be casting on a blanket with that as well. So that will be five blankets, six blankets on the go. It's not good, is it? But oh well. Um, <laughs> so I've cast on a new blanket. I have cast on a kind of a sample blanket, I guess, using the minis from my Marvelous Minis Club. Um, I've, I've dyed up an extra set of the DK weight minis um, and I've cast on a new blanket. I obviously can't show you because I can't reveal the colours because I'm still in the process of dyeing the clubs. They'll be shipped out hopefully the end of end of this week um but i cast on a new pattern that isn't a pattern yet <laughs> um a lovely friend of mine on instagram has designed a pattern and i need to talk to her and just double check that she's happy for me to share it on the podcast because it's not been released properly yet but she very very kindly sent me the details that she's got so far of how to make each of the blocks but basically each of the blocks uses five mini skeins and it's designed, um, it looks a little bit like, it's designed in quadrants and it looks a little bit, I think it looks a little bit like stained glass, like a stained glass window. Um, and I thought it would work really well because I could use each month to create a block. Um, 
and yeah the pattern's written for four ply but I'm using DK um, but it's easily adaptable in that way so um, once I've talked to her and she's happy for me to share details of it and stuff on the podcast and once I know that the minis have started arriving and I can share the colours then I'll be able to share it with you a little bit more a little bit more hopefully um and I've also got something else that I'm going to cast on actually let's put my tea on the radiator so it stays warm I've got a really itchy nose um I have caked up some of the opal yarn it's living in the lovely little space bag that was part of Gem's most recent mystery gem um and I've just caked up they're not going to match because I'm not going to bother I'm not going to bother matching them um but I have caked up the opal yarn I wanted to split it into two balls so that I could knit them two at a time um and this was one of the ones that I got at the beginning of this year um this is the opal fairy tale yarn and I forgot in that video, I said that I was going to put on the screen the translation from all the German, um, all the German words for the colourways. And I completely forgot about it. Um, but I have gone through and looked them up and I've just written on the inside. Um, and according to Google Translate, this one, which was Elfenlaken. There we go. Means elf laugh or laughing elf. Um, so yeah, so that is this colourway. Um, and these, I'm going to cast these on, they're just going to be really simple vanilla socks that I can work on. I can just pick them up and grab them and work on them as and when I'm doing various bits of homeschooling with Arthur, in between batches of yarn, that kind of thing. Um, but hopefully I want to get these finished in February because um, Opal counts towards a double entry for Sharon of the SCR1 TNA podcast's Stripey Sock Make Along. Um, if you haven't heard about it, I mentioned it the other week, run over to her podcast and have a little look. I will link her below when I link um, this because she's running a really fun self-striping um, make along all throughout the year. And if you knit socks with the relevant people on the relevant months, you get double entries. You can knit any stripey socks you want. Um, also, if you knit, you can knit like um, scrappy socks, as long as you stripe the yarns, you can knit scrappy socks and stuff as well. So if you don't have self-striping from some of the dyers or you don't have a full ball of self-striping commercially, you can make your own stripes. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, it sounds fun and I've got loads of self-striping and yeah, Opal is one of the people for February. So I thought I would cast these on at some point. But this was my dilemma about casting on a new pair of socks or finishing up the old pair of socks. I don't know. I can now hear crying children. Tom's with them. Tom will deal with it. Um, right. What else was I going to talk about? Uh, the last thing. The last thing I had to talk about this week is some blanket progress. Because I have made some blanket progress. Um, I have been working on my advent blanket. Um, and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago and I completely forgot to say where the yarn was from, which was so bad of me. And I am so sorry, Erin. I realised, I realised I'd forgotten to say it. And then I remember thinking to myself, oh, I must make sure that I put it on the screen when I'm editing. And then I didn't put it on the screen when I was editing. And yeah, I just felt horrendously guilty. But I am making a gorgeous advent blanket using yarn from the Henny Penny Makes advent calendar. Um, her advent calendar for 2020 was inspired around um, pantomimes and I'm using two colours per row in the order that they came out in so this is colours one and two, two and three, th no <laughs> one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight, nine and ten and eleven and twelve um, and I'm literally I'm keeping it so simple it's just a granny square simple granny square bordered and then I'm joining them together in rows and adding them on um, but I'm really enjoying how it looks and I have added whoops um this row at the bottom as well um I don't think I'd added this one on when I last showed it I don't think so I think I was in the process of making these squares um but this one I've definitely added on and what I've been doing is during the week every morning um we've been getting up a little bit earlier 
um, just to sort of get things a bit more prepared for the day. We're really bad at getting up. Me and Tom are such not morning people. <laughs> um, so the kids tend to get up and go downstairs and watch a bit of TV and we tend to have a cup of tea in bed and then all of a sudden the morning is gone and we've suddenly got to start homeschool and we've suddenly got to start work and it's been chaos. So we've been trying to get up a little bit earlier and go downstairs and have our cup of tea in the morning downstairs rather than having it in bed. And I've been using that time to crochet up one square a day um, to add to my blanket, which is really good because it means I've been making some progress on it. Um, so I've got a couple of squares for the next row. Um, these are the two colours for the next row. Um, so I'm getting there. Although I have only got this much of my joining yarn left, so I need to order some more of um, the joining yarn. Um, but yeah, I'm keeping them all in this basket. Um, and they're all still just in bags. There's a couple where I ripped the bags. I've had to put them in um, bags from another advent calendar. Um, but they're all still in their bags so that I've got the numbers. And then the leftovers I'm putting into a magic knot ball, which will get used in my Mild Mayhem blanket. Um, but it's such a pretty magic knot ball, isn't it? So yeah, making progress on that one. And hopefully, I will continue to make progress on that one. Just looking now, and I don't know that I've got anything else to talk to you about. No, that's everything from my show notes. Did you just have to look at the top of my head for absolutely ages then? Sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? I have no yarny goodness this week. Um, I have got no shop news to share, really. The die to order listings for the Winnie the Pooh stuff are still in, still in the shop, so you can still get those die to order. I'm going to be leaving those up. Um, and uh, the next club listings will go up on the 1st of February. And yeah, that's about it, really. I'm, I'm not sure whether I'm going to do a Valentine's update. I'm not sure how things are going to pan out with the kids still being off school um, and things like that. But we will see how it goes. Anyway, sorry this was a little bit of a shorter episode with not a lot of knitting progress, but that's life. Um, but I still like to put the weekly episodes out, even though I've not necessarily made masses of progress, because it's still nice to just kind of take that time and have a chat and say hello um, and things like that. And I know I benefit from this kind of half an hour of just sitting and chatting about my knitting to everyone. <laughs> Um, and sort of half an hour away from the kids. As much as I love my kids, we all need a little bit of space, don't we, sometimes? Um, and chance to drink a cup of tea, mostly while it's still hot. Um, so yeah, even though I don't necessarily have masses of knitting progress, I still feel like it's worthwhile sitting down and saying hello to everyone. Anyway, I better leave it there. I am gonna go and sit downstairs and hopefully get a little bit of time to do some knitting. Um, we are having a quiet day before the chaos of homeschool belong belongs begins again. And yeah, get this edited, I guess, and get it up so that you can all actually see it rather than me just talking to a camera. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching and I will talk to you all again next week. Bye.